Chaotic meetings aren't productive for anybody. Meeting workspaces in SharePoint can help you make new and reoccurring meetings way more organized and efficient. I want to show you how to use what is known as a meeting workspace. It's going to make it easier to manage meetings, and it's also going to give your team access to all of the materials and resources you want them to have so that your meetings can be more effective. So let's take a look at how to make a meeting workspace. Inside of my calendar, I've actually set up a weekly sales meeting, and it's been going on for some time now. If I open it up, I can open up the series and click OK. Getting everybody involved here that I've invited to participate on a level that is informed and ready is much more easy when I incorporate SharePoint into all of this. To do that, I need to have set up the Meeting Workspace button, and I've already done that here. It's up here in my Quick Access Toolbar. You have to manually insert this. It's not there by default. For more information on that, see the link at the end of the presentation. That being said, now that I've set up this meeting, all I need to do is click the Meeting Workspace button, and I have access to the Meeting Workspace pane here on the right-hand side. At this point, I just need to verify that I'm actually creating the workspace in the proper location, and I'm using the proper template. We're going to leave everything here at default, and then we can click Create. It's going to take just a moment, but it's going to create the workspace in my site. In this update for our meeting, it, it creates a link to the meeting workspace and instructions for getting there. All I would need to do at this point is send the update. Once I've done that, all I need to do now is pop over to my team site. I'm going to go into all site content and I'm going to come down here to my weekly sales status meeting under sites and workspaces. Now notice that I have some populated areas here. The first I'd like to point out is that for each date of the meeting, there is in fact a separate group of objectives, agenda, attendees, and document libraries. Let me show you how that works. So I'm going to be on 310 to 11, and we're going to go ahead and add a new item for the agenda. I fill out the information for the agenda item, and then I can go ahead and click Save. Now that's listed here, and all of these attendees who have received instructions on how to visit this site can come and add their own agenda items. Anytime they wish to read the entire thing, they can, in fact, just open the item. I can also add documents that are associated with this meeting. To do that, I simply click Add Document, and then I can upload multiple files so that I don't have to do it several times in a row. All I need to do now is add the documents that are important to this meeting. And then all I have to do from there is click OK. And those documents are quickly added to our workspace. Finally, I can go ahead and add a new item to my objectives. Enter the information and click Save. Now I'd like to remind you that all of the information that we've added in our objectives and our agenda, our documents in our document library, and of course the attendees from Outlook are all for the 10th. If I click on the 17th, you'll see that my objectives and my agenda and my document library become empty. My attendees stay the same because it is a recurring meeting, but the rest of this information can now be specific to the 17th and I would simply go through the same process again of adding a new item or adding a new document. So that's how we use a meeting workspace in SharePoint to make sure that our meetings don't become mayhem.